In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to arrange or sort data in R. So I'll use the terms arrange and sort interchangeably in this tutorial. So you should have R Studio open. It should look something like this. Here we have our console window here. I'm going to do, because I'm on a Windows, a control L to clear the console. Alternatively, you could go to edit and clear console here. And because I don't want to type directly into the console and instead I prefer to save my work, which I highly recommend that you do, let's go to File, New File, R Script. And I'm going to make sure to save this R Script as something meaningful. So I'm just going to call it test and you'd save it in whatever folder you want. I know this is going to override an existing file. Yes, that's okay. I don't recommend that you do this, but this works for the purposes of this demonstration. So the first thing I want to do is using the hashtag annotations, I'm going to make some notes to myself. And actually, let's start off and say this is, you know, arranging, sorting data in R. Okay, so we can orient ourselves and remind ourselves what we're actually doing in a given session to keep a paper trail of sorts. So the next thing that we need to do is set our working directory. Now I know that my working directory is already set here to the appropriate location or folder on my computer. And this is the folder where I've saved the data file for this tutorial. Now the data file we're working with in this example is called PERS data. So capital P, capital D, and this is a .csv file here, as you can see in this um, type right here, the file type location. And if we look, we can see this is saved in my H drive and in a folder called R workshop with a capital R and a capital W. Remember, R is case and space sensitive. Okay, so let's pretend that I haven't set my working directory. And so let's set working directory here. And I'm going to use the set WD function from base R here. And I happen to know off the top of my head what that file extension is. So I'm going to type that in right here. So this is my working directory location. So it's H drive um, and R workshop with a capital R and a couple capital W here. If I click run, we'll see that that worked out just fine. Now, what you may find easier is to go to session set working directory and choose directory. And here you could go through and select the location where you save that file. Again, the file we're working with in this particular example tutorial is called PERS data with a capital P and a capital D. So the next thing that we want to do is actually read in our data. Now, if you have any questions about setting your working directory reading and data, check out the other tutorials that specifically address these if you want to know more information or get a refresher on how to do this. So let's say read in data and specifically, I'm going to use the read underscore CSV function from the reader package. You can use whichever read function you like, but I do recommend this, this particular function I'm working with here to read in the data. Now, I'm going to name this data frame object that I'm reading in something that's short. And for at least me, it's intuitive. It's PD capital, which is I'm going to say stands for perform or personal data, which is what is contained in the data file we're going to read in. And then I use the left handed arrow here to signify that I'm going to name this new data frame. And so what am I going to use to name it? Well, I'm going to use the read underscore CSV function here from the reader package, which I'll show you in just a second how you would access that package. And if you recall, the name of the file is persdata.csv. And make sure you keep that .csv extension here, put this all in quotation marks. And remember, in this case, the file's name with a capital P and a capital D, and there's no spaces in here. Now, before I run that, I need to make sure that I have the reader package install. So we'll need to make sure that we use the install that packages function. If you haven't already installed this, I have installed this, but I'm going to show you how you would actually write this script very quickly. So it's installed at packages and in the parentheses as the sole argument and also with quotation marks around it, we'll type in the name of the package where this read underscore CSV function comes from. It's reader all lowercase with no E. Now that would only install it if we want to access it or check out this package so we can use its functions. We would then do the library function and we would type in reader and this will bring it to the forefront so that we can actually use this read underscore CSV function. So let's go ahead and let's just highlight these two rows. Again, I'm not going to use this install.packages line here because I know I just recently installed this. Okay. So let's click run. All right, so you get a little bit of a warning here. It's just saying that the version of R that I'm um, working with that R Studio is based on here is a little bit, um, I think I'm at 3.5.0 and now we're at 3.5.2 that this reader package was most recently updated using. 
Okay, so we'll ignore that. And then here you can see that we have the PD function uh, or the PD data frame object here named, and we can see this in our global environment. Let's go ahead and if you actually just highlight this right here and click run, this is a quick way to do a view. And so we can view down here in our console. This is a small data frame, so it works that way. Alternatively, we could come here and click on uh, the name of this global data frame object in our global environment. And you'll see a new tab opens up and we can visualize the data here and scan through, sort it and so forth, okay? All right, so I'm gonna save here. All right, so we've read in the data successfully. Um, let's also, just for ease, so we can copy and paste in a second, let's um, identify names of variables in data frame or DF for short. And we can use the names function from base R to do this. And so let's do names, PD. Remember PD is what we name this data frame object here. It's PD with a capital P and a capital D. And we use that as the sole argument in here. We click run on that line. And we'll see here are the exact names of the variables. And we could have gotten that here as well, okay? All right, so now let's get into actually the focus of today, which is working with the arrange function, which comes from the dplyr package. And this dplyr package is actually from the same tidyverse that the reader package comes from that we use here, and specifically the read underscore CSV function. So let's install and access the dplyr package. Okay, and so we'll use the same script as above here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this for ease. And I'm just going to replace reader here with dplyr. And same here. Now I recently installed dplyr2, so I'm not going to go through and install it to my computer once more. But because I have it installed, I'm just going to use the library function here to access it. Okay, so just go ahead and run this line here. Okay, so it attached the package here, we get a little bit of some background information, some objects that are being masked, this shouldn't be an issue. Uh, for what we're doing today, specifically what it's addressing there. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to um, use, we're going to arrange, or in other words, sort data in the data frame. And so specifically, we're gonna use a, a function from the dplyr package that's called arrange, all lowercase. So it's very appropriately named here. And so there's different ways that I can specify this. And I'm gonna show you first doing this with what's called a pipe, okay? I'll show you what that means in a second. So if I'm piping something, I can write it like this. And so just as a note too, pipes, um, just so you can see this spelled out, they actually, this is something that comes from the Magritter package. So M-A-G-R-I-T-T-R. And dplyr is built partially, or it's dependent on the Magritter package, which allows you to use this pipe notation, which can be quite powerful here and effective. All right, so what we're going to do is first specify the name of our data frame object, so PD. And then we are going to do, um, this is probably gonna be a new notation for you, the percentage sign, the greater than sign, and then another percentage. This right here is a pipe. So this, when we say pipe, this is what we're referring to here. And so what we're gonna do is pipe this data frame object here. In other words, we're gonna forward the information contained in this data frame object, which is PD. And we are then going to use a follow-up and we're gonna, we're gonna forward it to a function that is a follow-up of sorts that then we'll apply something to. And so what we're doing right now isn't the most elaborate way you could use a pipe. But what you can do with a pipe is you can string together multiple functions. And so using the order of operations, you can actually do multiple things to let's say a data frame or to a value of some sort or some type of object you have in R um, using multiple functions one after the other. And this can also help you clean up your script or code a little bit. So you don't have all these nested functions um, as well if you're using a function within a function for instance. Okay. so. The next thing that we do is we type in the arrange function here. So again, it's just arrange all lowercase, and this comes from the dplyr package, which is why we access the dplyr package for this. Okay, so let's start with, if we look down here, let's say that we wanna arrange the data, or in other words, sort the data based on this start date variable. So I'm gonna copy exactly the, the exact name of it, because remember, R is case sensitive here. 
I'm going to paste it as the sole argument here in this um, line of script or in this particular function. So we have the range function. The only argument is the name of the variable we wish to use to sort the data frame run here and the arrange function did indeed sort the data frame such that we can see in our console output here that now it is arranged in ascending order via the start date uh, variable values here so we see from january 1st 2016 all the way in order to january 9th 2016. okay well what if though you wanted to do this in descending order well this is where we're going to do a function within a function so in order to do that, we can actually copy and paste our exact same script. And let's make a note, um, sort arrange sort in descending order. And all we're going to do is we're going to add a function that's called DESC. And make sure you add an additional parentheses here because every left parenthesis needs a corresponding right parenthesis. And so here we see that the name of the function is DESC or desk or for descending. So we, now we want this to be in descending order that we're going to arrange this. So now we have this function within this function. Okay, so we can actually have functions serving as arguments and other functions. All right, so everything else stays the same there. Let's click run. Okay, now we see it in the reverse order here if we look at the start date. But notice this isn't actually changing anything about our underlying data frame. What if we wanted to save the data frame in this new order? Well, the way that we would do that is actually by doing the naming convention. So I'm gonna do an override. So override existing data frame and um, using this arrange function here. So what I'll do is I'll do PD left-handed arrow here. And then I'm just gonna copy this exact same script from here. Oops, don't wanna cut there, wanna copy. And I'm gonna paste it here. And what you'll see is that all we've done is said, okay, do this same operation here, except now let's name this output object. Let's actually name it as the data frame so that we can override the existing one. So now this PD data frame will have start date in descending order, or it'll be ordered by start date in descending order. So let's go ahead and click run. Okay, you'll see that we don't see in our output anymore because now if we go and click and look at our actual data frame, we'll see that now the data frame is sorted in this way, okay? All right, so now you might be asking, okay, how do I do this without a pipe? I'm not quite comfortable with using pipes yet. I'd rather do it the old fashioned way. Well, it's actually quite simple. So let's do this without a pipe. And first I'll start with the first example. So let's say we wanna do this script here. So we just want to use the arrange function to sort the data frame by the start date value. And by default, this will be in ascending order. Well, all we would do here is just type in arrange, but now for the first argument, we're gonna type in the name of the data frame. And then as the second argument, we can type in the name of an additional, of the variable we wish to sort by. So it's start date here, okay? And so this is our first argument. This is our second argument and let's click run, okay? And so now you'll see that we've done the same thing without a pipe. And then we can do the same thing too in terms of, um, naming a new data frame we would do the exact same thing here so pd start date and this would work exactly the same way here doing it without a pipe we can click run here and it would update here so our data frame object has been updated in that way okay now what if we want to do we want to sort by and arrange by more than one variable or two or more variables so if we want to arrange by two plus variables so the way that we do this is quite simple. And so I'll reverse the order now. So let's say, how do we do this without a pipe first? Well, to do it without a pipe, all we do is type the name of the function arranged as the first argument, the name of the data frame. Remember, this is what we read in above. And then let's now say that we want to sort force for first by gender, and then within gender, sort by start date. So we'll do gender, because it's the exact name of the variable here. And then we'll use start date again, okay? And let's click run. Okay, so now we've sorted within gender. We've done gender first, so the females here, because it's alphabetically F before M for male. And then we can see we've sorted start date within this. So from in ascending order within each gender here, okay? And so what would this look like if we did the same thing with a pipe notation? Well, we would just type in the name of the data frame and then pipe the data frame 
using this symbol again, which represents the pipe, name of the function, the arrange function from the dplyr package, and then we would do gender and start date. Okay. And so if we do this, click run, same, same outcome there in our output. And we could do the same thing here if we wanted to actually override an existing uh, data frame or to create a new data frame. Let's actually try creating a new one here. Let's call this PD2. And so let's, instead of overriding this existing one, we're just going to name the resulting data frame changes here as PD2 and click run. Now you'll see we have a new data frame object here and you can see now we can choose from these. We have one sorted one way, one sorted the other way. So it really depends on what your goals are here. Okay, so this is essentially how you do your arranging and sorting, at least if you choose to do so with the dplyr package. One final note though is uh, make sure you do keep your dplyr package and all your tidyverse packages and just in general, all packages you use up to date by regularly running that install.packages with that function with that package because often they'll make updates and because there's dependencies with other fat packages on which a single package is built, well, that can lead to issues down the road of one of those dependent packages, updates, and so forth. So make sure you keep everything up to date. All right, well, good luck on this. Thank you.